In this example, we have 20 flying alvi who are in a plane and they're going to jump out of the airplane uh, one Elvis every five seconds. So we've got alvi jumping out of this plane and we're told that each Elvis weighs 255 pounds mass. Uh, that's Elvis toward the latter half of his career. And we're told of airplanes flying along horizontally at a speed of 120 miles per hour. And it tries to accelerate at a rate of one foot per second squared. So we've got these L flying L by in here and they're starting to jump out just as the plane's trying to accelerate. I don't know why it's trying to accelerate, but it is. And we want to know, uh, we want to be able to calculate the change in the thrust that must be supplied by the airplane propellers as a function of time until all of the Elvi have left the building, I mean plane. Okay. So assume there's a drag force acting on the plane that can be modeled by this minus kV squared, where k is 0.2 pounds force per square foot per square second. And v is the velocity of the airplane relative to the air, and the air density at an altitude of 2.5 miles is approximately 0.61 times the air density at sea level. Uh, we can assume that the mass rate at which fuel is burned is very small compared to the mass rate at which Elvi leave the plane. And the plane weight at altitude not counting Elvi is 300,000, I'm sorry, 30,000 pounds mass. Okay, so we have all these Elvi jumping out of the plane. We're trying to find the additional thrust we have to apply to the plane in order for it to accelerate at a certain amount. So this is a linear momentum kind of problem because we're trying to find an acceleration of the aircraft. So we'll apply the linear momentum equation to a control volume that surrounds the aircraft. And we'll use a coordinate system that's fixed to the aircraft. So we'll just put it right there. It's, it's generally easier, it's almost always easier to use a control volume that's, I'm sorry, a coordinate system that's fixed to the control volume. So we'll do everything using that coordinate system. This is a non-inertial coordinate system because the, the aircraft is trying to accelerate. So that coordinate system is accelerating. All right, so let's go ahead and write out the linear momentum equation. So the linear momentum equation in the x direction. That's the direction we care about. So we'll write down the full, full equation here. All right. So we need to have the acceleration term in our linear momentum equation because we're using this coordinate system that's accelerating here. So we need to include that. Let's go ahead and start evaluating some of the terms. We'll start with the easy ones first. So body force in the x direction, that's going to be zero. We're assuming that gravity's acting downward. Surface forces in the x direction. So we actually have a couple of surface forces. Number one, we have the drag force acting on the aircraft. And we were told in the problem statement that that's just this minus kV squared. So I'll just write it as minus kV squared acting there. And then we also have the thrust that the engines exert um, to provide the, you know, the, to keep the aircraft moving along. And I'll just draw that as a force. It's actually a momentum flux, but we can think of it here as just as a, a force. And, and we're going to have the thrust plus a delta T for the thrust because we're trying to find the additional thrust we have to apply in order to accelerate the aircraft. Now at steady conditions, the thrust will equal the minus kV squared. So we're just trying to find the little extra bit of thrust that we have to apply here. So our surface forces will be T plus delta T, that's acting in the positive x direction, minus kV squared because that's acting in the negative x direction. The acceleration term, this is the acceleration of our coordinate system with respect to a, an, an inertial coordinate system, so like a coordinate system, system fixed to the ground. So this is our acceleration of the aircraft since the coordinate system is fixed to the aircraft. So I'll just write it as, um, I guess, dv dt since the aircraft's moving at um, velocity v. Um, we use the v right up here. So I'll just say that this is the acceleration of our coordinate system, and then that's going to be multiplied by the mass inside our control volume. The rho dv integral cv, that's just the mass inside the control volume. Let's go ahead and evaluate this term. Um, so here, this is the, the, the linear momentum 
leaving our control volume through the control surface. So the only thing that we have leaving here is the Elvi jumping out of the plane. So we have Elvises jumping out of the plane here. But I'm going to assume that the Elvises are jumping out, you know, straight straight out of the aircraft like that. They're not they're not taking a run toward the back or toward the front. So the x component of the velocity, this term right here, will be zero for these Elvises, right? Because they're coming out in the y direction and not in the x direction. So they don't contribute any x linear momentum flux out of the aircraft. So that part's zero, actually. Now there's nowhere else where we have x momentum leaving. I mentioned before that in reality what happens is the engines on the aircraft would provide, well, if we had a jet engine, we'd have some thrust as a result of that, but we're we're lumping that, and, and that, by the way, that thrust out of the jet engine would be like a momentum flux. But I told you that we'll treat that as an equivalent force acting on the aircraft. So, so there's nothing else here that we have to include. Now the very last term is the time rate of change of x linear momentum in the control volume. Let's go back up to the picture again. And this is uh, the x linear momentum as we use that coordinate system. So if you look at this aircraft, first of all, its mass is certainly changing with time, right? Because we're, we're losing LVI at a rate of one every five seconds. So we're losing some mass. So it's, it's not a steady problem. So this term is not zero because it's steady. However, as we stand on the aircraft, it looks like the aircraft has zero speed, right? If, if this is our coordinate system fixed to the aircraft, it looks like the aircraft and everything inside of it basically has zero speed. So this is actually, this is zero, or prox well, it's, it's zero, um, because the UX is zero using our coordinate system. Maybe it's not exactly zero, maybe it's approximately zero. Maybe people are walking around in here, the Elvi are, they're getting nervous and so they're pacing back and forth. Um, so maybe it's not exactly zero, but it's awfully close to zero. And certainly the aircraft, which would be the majority of the weight, something like 30,000 pounds, it's zero as you stand on the surface of the aircraft. So it's very reasonable to say that this term is zero because the UX is zero here. It's not because it's steady, because it's not steady, the mass is changing, but it's the UX is, uh, that's zero here. So that makes this zero. So we have all the terms that we need here. Uh, we've evaluated everything, so let's write it all out again. The left-hand side is zero. The right-hand side, we have a t plus delta t minus kv squared minus dv dt times the mass inside the control volume. And I mentioned before, at uh, for steady flight, let me put this this way. For steady flight, thrust will exactly balance the drag force, right? If the plane's flying along at 120 miles per hour and it's just flying along in a steady manner, the thrust provided by the engines will exactly balance the drag that's acting on it. So I can write this at steady flight. What we're trying to do is just go from steady flight and we're now trying to accelerate. So I'm going to just say that these are zero and so those will cross out. I shouldn't say they're zero, they're, they're, they cancel one another out. And so then what we're left with is the change in the thrust that we have to provide will be equal to the mass in the control volume times dB dt. It's probably not such a surprising expression. It kind of looks like, you know, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now the mass in the control volume is certainly changing because we have L by jumping out of it. So let's apply conservation of mass to determine how the, what the mass looks like in the control volume. So we have time rate of change of mass in the control volume plus the mass flow rate out of the control volume is equal to zero. This term is just the time rate of change of mass in the control volume. This term is the mass flux out of the control volume. Well, that's all the different Elvi jumping out of the airplane. So I'm just going to write that as an m dot out. That's basically one Elvis every five seconds. So 255 pounds, I'll just write it here, it's 255 pounds mass every five seconds jumping out of that aircraft.
Okay, so we can write this down as the time rate of change of mass in the control volume is equal to minus m dot out. I'll just put that on the other side. And so then we can integrate this, integrate both sides. Basically, I'm just solving the differential equation. So we go from some initial mass to some final mass. We can integrate this side as t goes from zero to some final time. And the mass flow rate, I, I'm assuming, is a constant that the Elvi are well spaced. They jump out every five seconds. So the mass in the control volume is equal to its initial mass minus the mass flow rate times the time. And the we now know how the mass changes with time. We can go ahead and plug that in right up here. So we have the little extra bit of thrust we have to provide is the initial plane mass minus m dot out times time times the acceleration that we want to want to reach. So that's the little extra bit of thrust that we have to provide. So let's go ahead and plug in some numbers here. So m naught, that's the initial mass of the aircraft. That's 30,000 pounds mass we were given. m dot out, that's the rate at which we're losing L by on purpose, mind you. That's 255 pounds mass every five seconds. So it's something like uh, 51 pounds mass per second. Uh, the acceleration, dv dt, we said was one foot per second. That was given in the problem statement. One foot per second squared, I should say. It's given in the, the problem statement. Actually, I take back the initial m dot. I made a mistake here. That's just the mass of the aircraft, but we also have the elvi that are inside of it. So I should put, we have 200, uh, we, each Elvis weighs 255 pounds of mass, and there are 20 of them. So when you multiply that out, that's 35,100 pounds mass. Wow. These Elvises are some heavy cargo. So when you plug the numbers in, we'll get that the, the thrust is uh, that we have to provide is about a one, just over a thousand pounds force minus uh, 1.6 pounds force. Let me fix how I wrote that. Pounds force per second times the time in seconds. And this goes for something like 100 seconds because there are 20 LVI and they jump out every five seconds. So that's the extra little bit of thrust that we would have to provide in order to accelerate at this instant in time um, as the uh, Elvis's jump out of the plane. All right, so this was a just an exercise in applying the linear momentum equation for an accelerating control volume. So we, we, we knew that we needed to apply the linear momentum equation as well as conservation of mass here. We used a control volume fixed to the, I'm sorry, coordinate system fixed to the control volume. That's usually the best way to do it whenever you have a moving control volume. Just fix your coordinate system to it. Then we evaluated the terms here, recognizing that the surface force was the thrust and the drag force. We have our acceleration term. This is probably the hardest thing conceptually to understand, is that the time rate of change of x linear momentum within the control volume is zero because the ux using our coordinate system is zero. There was no x momentum flux out of the aircraft because the LVI, I assumed, were just coming straight out sort of in the, in the y direction up here. If they were running out backwards out of the back of the plane, then you'd actually have a UX component you'd have to include in here. So, so if we had them jumping out of the back of the plane like that, then we would actually need to incorporate the UX term. This would be the speed at which they jump out, and this would be the mass flow rate of the LVI coming out, which would be the 255 pounds mass every five seconds. All right, and then we uh, and then we ended up just kind of solving the rest of the problem. So we'll go ahead and end the example there.